مسلم احرص على نشر هذه المادة فالدال على الخير كفاعل يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن تنصروا الله ينصركم ويثبت أقدامكم And as we have been programmed, programmed mentally, intellectually, one must be aware of this being programmed like a computer, like a computer, like a computer. The programming that we are constantly assaulted by throughout our life conditions us, it programs us to a particular world view, to a particular world view, to a particular world view. Is they are absolutely propagandizing the world with all of their theses about the nature of the universe that we live in where we come from our origins the origin of the universe and so forth so forth so forth. the project is literally the secularization of the world to completely strip the world from religious beliefs. This is the project, and that is why it is called Novus Ordo Seclorum, a new secular or worldly order. A new study says the news media have been pushing a gospel of godlessness on the American public. On the American public. On the American public. On the American public. Sure, it's hard for some of you to believe, but we will, you will never see it more clearly than you will today. I mean, I mean, it's just so amazing. The creationists were right all along. To be honest, they just didn't have the argumentative skills. Argumentative skills. All of you are engaged in running your mouths, doing your business, multiplying, buying houses, cars, business, whatever you're doing. And when you're told about God, religion, life, Morality, you're saying, look, I ain't got no time for that. Look, I ain't got no time for that. Because this media is here and designed to make sure that they ask no critical questions. That they ask no critical questions to make sure that the only thing that they are concerned about is having a good time. Is having a good time. Is having a good time. The only thing they're concerned about is filling their belly, bellies. The only thing they're concerned about is acquiring more and more material things. More and more material things and so that is why today one of the struggles that you have as young people that when you want to do different events and you want to talk about real issues you have the struggle of many of your peers who've been so conditioned in this matrix that they would rather party than listen to the truth they would rather party and shop and go to the mall than to stand up for issues of justice they're stuck in the matrix, they're stuck in the matrix. but you have the responsibility of helping to wake them up of helping to wake them up of helping to wake them up now, how do we know that there's a God? After having been thoroughly brainwashed. And how do we know that there's a creator? 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 About 15 billion years ago, there were no stars in the sky. There wasn't even a sky. All that existed was the primordial fireball. Primordial fireball. Primordial then, fireball. Primordial then, something happened. In a flash, Everything suddenly expanded. This was how it all began. The first moment of existence. What we now call the Big Bang. 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 At the beginning of the 20th century, scientists believed that the universe had always existed. That matter energy was, was infinite. It had always been around. Um, the model is called the steady state model. Because the model of the universe that it's been around forever basically doesn't change. The universe is steady state. But what happened in the last hundred years is that model has been blown away because of the evidence. Observations now suggest, as you all know, that the universe began some 12 to 15 billion years ago. The first evidence that the universe had a beginning is the expanding universe. Researchers wanted to believe in a universe that always was and always will be. Eternal. But galaxies flying away from each other meant that once, long ago, they were clumped together. It meant something started them moving. The universe had a beginning. Today, it's called the Big Bang Theory. This was first discovered in 1929 by Edwin Hubble. And uh, 
It's the first evidence that um, the universe had a beginning. The second evidence the universe had a beginning is the cosmic background radiation. The discovery of the cosmic background radiation was a fatal blow to those who wanted to believe in an eternal universe. The Big Bang proponents had won. Now the final evidence for the origin of the universe is the relative abundance of light elements. It's very clear now that the universe had an origin and scientists have become to accept this. In fact, the equations of general relativity that Einstein developed had an origin of the universe. When Einstein developed his equations of general relativity, they showed that there should be an expansion of the universe and an origin, and Einstein didn't like that. He added something called a cosmological constant, which he later realized was not there. When we, were, when we saw that the universe was expanding, that there really was an origin, he threw out the cosmological constant, he said that that was the biggest mistake of his scientific career, was introducing that, was introducing that, was introducing that, was introducing that, was introducing that. But when this Big Bang model was first proposed in the early part of the 20th century, it was received with great skepticism by the scientific community. Because the scientific community knew that the Big Bang opened up the possibility of having a beginning and a creator and someone who began it. Have you ever asked yourself where the universe came from? Why everything exists instead of just nothing? Typically, atheists have said that the universe is just eternal and uncaused. For example, Bertrand Russell, the famous atheist on the radio program, he said the universe is just there and that's all. But the astrophysical evidence indicates that the universe began to exist in a great explosion called the Big Bang 15 billion years ago. Most laymen do not appreciate that not only were all matter and energy created in that event, but physical space and time themselves. This is of utmost importance, for it implies, as the Cambridge astronomer Fred Hoyle points out, that the Big Bang theory requires the creation of the universe from nothing. 